Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnMoon.com and today I want to show you how to make one of my favorite fall soup recipes, pumpkin and acorn squash soup. This is a cozy recipe for fall. It tastes really great, served alongside some kind of main dish. You can also, of course, have it for a meal, maybe paired with a salad. It is nourishing, made with homemade bone broth and filling. So let's get started. First, we're going to take one medium-sized acorn squash and one medium to small pie pumpkin. Now, the large pumpkins are edible. You can cook them, but they don't have as great a flavor as the little ones. So you really wanna aim to find one of these small pie type pumpkins. So we're gonna take one of each and cut them in half down the middle, scoop out the seeds, dot them with butter, sprinkle them with salt, and then put them in a 400 degree oven in a glass baking dish until they're soft. This should take about an hour. All right, while that pumpkin and acorn squash is cooking, I'm going to get some bacon going here in this large skillet. Now, I love cooking soups with bacon because it just makes them more delicious, obviously satisfying filling. Now, usually I like to utilize the bacon grease in my recipe. I know that for a while, fat was a no-go in the nutritional space, but I think people are less afraid of it now. We enjoy lots of fat and feel great. While that's cooking, I'm gonna get a whole onion and a whole bulb of garlic cut up. Now when this bacon gets good and crispy, I'm gonna set it aside in a separate bowl. And then I'm gonna keep the bacon grease in the pot and cook my onions and garlic. I'm gonna saute it up in the bacon grease. Now prior to cooking this, I just chopped it up into bite-sized bits. It's great on top of the soup later. But while that's finishing, I'm going to strain off some bone broth. So I shared all about how to do this in a previous video. I make it in my Instant Pot and it cooks up and it gels and it's just healthy, gut healing, nourishing bone broth. So if you want to know how to make that, I will link it in the description below and in the cards above. This bacon is all crispy. So I'm gonna put it in here and leave the grease intact. It's okay if a few pieces, a few stragglers stay in there. So I'm gonna throw all of my onions and garlic into this hot grease and just let it get soft. Now if you do wanna make this a lower fat version, you could remove about half the bacon grease and not put all of it in your soup. We've always done it this way just because it's really tasty, but if you have any special need for lower fat, of course, it'll still saute up just fine and it'll still taste delicious. Okay, while that's going, I'm gonna chop up about a quarter cup, I don't really measure this, but about a quarter cup of fresh parsley. Now, I don't like to cook this in with the onions and garlic because I feel like it tastes fresher and better whenever it just goes straight into the soup raw. To this, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of sugar. I just use an organic brown sugar. A half teaspoon of ground ginger. Now this is just because we're using pumpkin. It tastes so nice to have a little bit of ginger with pumpkin. A little fresh black pepper. And then about teaspoon of salt. Again, once I get my pumpkin and broth in later, I like to add a little bit more and taste test because you're never getting the exact same size of a pumpkin or anything, so it can always be a little bit variable. 
To this, I'm going to add my pumpkin and acorn squash. I'm just going to scoop out the middle and add it into my onions and garlic. And of course, you're gonna wanna let this cool just a bit so you can handle it. Just kind of pull it away from the peel. It'll come pretty easily. If you get a little bit of peel in there, it's not gonna kill you. It's just a little bit tough. Now, of course, you can make a pureed pumpkin this exact same way. I have a tutorial here on my YouTube channel and I share some of my favorite varieties to cook, which I'll link below, but it's a very straightforward process. You can seriously just throw it in the oven and scoop it out and use it in all your fall recipes. I actually shared this week on my blog a recipe for pumpkin sheet pan nachos which might sound weird, but it is so good. I'll leave a link for that below. I didn't make a video for it here on YouTube, but it is on my blog. In case you wanna make some more pumpkin recipes while pumpkins are cheap, I don't know about you, but I can find them at my local produce stand for super cheap. And a lot of people in my area don't think of pumpkin as food, just decoration. And so they don't, they're not very expensive, but they actually provide a ton of food per pumpkin and they keep a long time. So at the end of the season, I might buy 30 pumpkins and just keep them in the basement. To this, I'm going to add about a quart of bone broth. Now this is still liquidy. You want it gelled, but it just came out. Ooh, it's so hot. It just came out of my Instant Pot. It would gel after it sat in the fridge, but this is fresh, so it's not. Now if you're making fresh broth, it's gonna be difficult because it's so hot. And I'm just going to let this pumpkin, garlic, onion mixture go for about 30 minutes to simmer and meld the flavors together. After this has simmered for about 30 minutes, I'm going to smooth it out with my immersion blender. Now you can also just put this in a regular blender. You're gonna wanna let it cool a little bit so you don't burn yourself with the transfer. But that's what I did for many years before I bought this immersion blender. I just used my glass oyster blender. I wouldn't want to use a plastic blender for this because it's so hot, it just seems like it would leach. And so I would either use a glass blender, which I'll link the one that I have below, or an immersion uh, stainless steel wand type blender. I bought this one on Amazon. And if you're going to be making a lot of pureed soups, this is a really good investment. <laughs> less dirty dishes and less transferring. You can also leave a little bit chunky if you want to. With my potato soup, I do that. With this soup, I like to keep it pretty pureed. This smells incredible. It smells like fall. I also like to add about 10 ounces of fresh cream. Gives it a little bit of a creamy texture and taste. Now, again, you're going low fat. You can omit this. You do not have to have this. To serve it up, I just add a little bit of bacon and parsley to the top. Oh yeah. Cut your parsley pretty small so you don't get any big bites of it, but it would so good to have fresh parsley. It's just so hearty and delicious and cozy. You can head over to the blog, farmhouseonmoon.com. I will leave a link below to the exact post, but I have a printable recipe card for this soup. So if you wanna save this soup recipe, uh, you can go to that blog post, print it out, or just print it on your Pinterest boards for your fall recipes. If you aren't familiar yet with my subscriber library, I talk about this on occasion, but I have a subscriber library on my blog where people who are subscribed to my email list will get a password and you can access all of my free eBooks and printables in one place. So that's a really good resource and it's completely free. So I will also leave a link where you can get onto that in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. Right now I am sharing tons of fall recipes, decorating. It is full blown fall here. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse. Thank you.